If you've never made sausage before, breakfast sausage is a great place to start because it is as delicious as it is simple. Plus, it reminds me of breakfast when I was at grandma's house. Let's make up a big batch, save some for later. I picked up a standard pork butt, which has a great ratio between lean meat and fat for sausage, and it's one less thing to worry about. I've also made this recipe with deer, but I had to add a little bit of pork fat to get the right ratios. And that's a really great fallback, especially if your catch is a little bit more gamey than you like. The key here is roughly a 70 to 30 ratio of lean meat to fat. And this pork butt pretty much has that right out of the gate. But if I was doing a leaner meat like deer, beef, or something else, I'd have to add that fat in. And an easy way to calculate that is to take the weight of your meat, multiply it by 0.4, and that'll tell you how much fat you need to add. If you don't love math, an easier way for a really juicy sausage is two parts of lean meat to one part fat, or a little bit leaner, you could do three parts of meat to one part fat. But the best part is when you grind your own, you can set your own ratios and recipes, because after all, it isn't rocket surgery. So let's chop up this pork butt to get it ready for grinding. And the size that you need to chop it to is gonna depend on your grinder, but a one inch cube will work for just about anything. One of the biggest mistakes that people make as they're making their sausage is letting things get too warm. And you have to remember that heat is the enemy to making sausage. So this, there's a lot of friction that happens inside of a grinder and that's gonna melt the fat and could gum up the whole works and clog things up. If you wanna avoid that, all you need to do is put this in the freezer after you chop it up for about 30 minutes and put the grinder head in there as well and it'll come out much better. So now that we're out of the freezer, we're ready for the first grind and I'm using a plate with really big holes. And when you think of big holes, think of a chunky grind. The big reason for that is because most grinders can't go from big chunks of meat down to the fine grind that you're gonna want for breakfast sausage in a single pass. So we're gonna do it twice, once with a big plate and once with a finer plate. And as you put your grinder together, there's one other pro tip, one thing that you don't wanna forget. And that is when you put your plate in, you also wanna make sure that your blade butts up against this with a flat side. Some of these blades are single-sided, some of them are double, but if it only has one flat side, that's the side that goes up against the plate. I'm using this monster of a grinder in order to make this breakfast sausage, but you don't have to. I've linked down below to a video that I've made and it goes over the different tiers of grinders and the benefits and drawbacks of each. But if you've got one, just use whatever you have. I'm sure it'll work great. And one bonus tip, while you're grinding, some of that meat may get stuck right here in the grinding head. So what you can do is take a little bit of the meat you've already ground, throw it back in the top. And that way, when you open this thing up, all the meat inside there that's still stuck is already ground up because it's pushed everything else through. After the first grind, it's time to add the salt and the seasonings. And there's one that I always measure out perfectly and that is the salt. I go for one and a half percent of the salt based on the weight of the meat. So if I had a thousand grams of meat, I'd add 15 grams of salt, and then you can just scale that up for however much meat you have in your recipe that day. And that makes sure that you get the perfect amount of salt no matter how much sausage you make, because this is the most important ingredient. And if you don't love numbers, down in the description below is a recipe for 1,000 grams of meat that includes all of these ingredients. And the next one up is sage. This one is the quintessential flavor that comes in most breakfast sausage, at least in America. And when that gets cooking, you know that it smells like breakfast. Of course, everybody loves black pepper. And I like mine to be a little bit spicy, so I always put in some cayenne. If you don't have that, some crushed red pepper flakes would work well too. Then nutmeg adds a little bit more spice. And the last ingredient is brown sugar. And you could leave this one out if you're doing keto or the carnivore diet, if you're trying to look and watch out for your carbs. But I'm actually using maple sugar because maple flavored sausage is one of my favorites. This is just dried up maple syrup and it adds a really good flavor along with it. And if you don't have maple sugar, you could add a little bit of maple syrup or you could add some maple flavoring instead. With all the seasonings in there, it's time to get in and mix it up. And the best tool is your hands. You're not gonna find much else that's gonna mix it as well. And you'll notice that I'm wearing gloves and that's not just for cleanliness. I do that because it keeps the meat from getting underneath your fingernails. It's much easier to clean up afterward when you're done. Now, when it comes to hamburger, you wouldn't be able to mix it like this. You'd overwork the patty and make it tough. But this sausage we're gonna grind again and send it through a couple more times, so you really can't overdo it. And you'll remember that heat is the enemy of good sausage, especially when you're grinding. So after all that grinding and mixing, this is way too warm. We're gonna put it back in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Fortunately though, this isn't gonna fit in my freezer, so I'm gonna have to put it back in a smaller bin. For the second grind, I'm using a finer plate and that's gonna give me the texture that I want by grinding it into smaller pieces as well as mix up all those seasonings so it's completely even throughout. 
So after the second grind, you could go ahead and cook this or freeze it right now, but it benefits a lot from sitting in the fridge for a few hours. That way these spices will continue to hydrate and the flavors will meld just a little bit more. If you do that big of a batch, you're gonna wanna be able to save some for later, and the best way to do that is in a vacuum sealed bag. These are good for at least a year in the freezer. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, you could just put it in a regular old freezer bag trying to get as much air out as possible, and this will be good for at least a few months. Mornings are really busy for me, and so one of the time-saving tips that I have is to cook up some of the sausage in the links or in the patties in advance, and then put it into the freezer. You can pull one of those out, throw it in the microwave so you get a super great convenience, as well as great flavor because you have a good sear or barbecue flavor depending on how you did it. And if you're in the market for a grinder, check out this video where I go over the basics of different tiers of grinders. That way you can find the right one for your needs.